Hello, I'm Mike Danielson. Today I'm visiting the Center for Nutritional Research at the Illinois Institute for Technology. I'm going to be speaking with Dr. Britt Burton Freeman. She's one of the leading researchers in the area of prehypertension and hypertension research. Today we're going to be discussing her third human clinical trial utilizing a, a compound called Meganatural BP Grapeseed Extract. Let's go inside and learn more. Great to meet you, Dr. Britt. Nice to meet you. Now, for those of us who aren't from Chicago and aren't familiar with the mm -hmm. Institute, can you tell us a little bit about the work that you're doing here and, um, and how, how, all this, how this new department got started? Sure. Well, we started about six years ago, and we have the Center for Nutrition Research, which is under the umbrella of the Institute for Food mm -hmm. Safety and Health. So we work both on food safety and health aspects of food. Mm -hmm. um, at the center that we're located today, this is where we do all of our human research. Mm -hmm. um, we also have another location where all of our biochemistry and cell culture work is conducted. Excellent. Excellent. So, Dr. Britt, how long have you been doing this kind of blood pressure research? We've been doing the high blood pressure research here at the Center for Nutrition mm -hmm. Research for um, five years, okay. um, but we've been doing research with my colleagues, Dr. Tisa Capagoda mm -hmm. and Dr. Indica Edisering at the University of California, Davis for um, many more years before that. Excellent. So with an estimated 30% of the American population being pre-hypertensive or having hypertension, mm -hmm. uh, what is the significance of this research, do you think? Well, I think uh, well, prehypertension is that period before um, individuals would go on medication mm -hmm. to manage um, high blood pressure. And so this type of research um, allows us to utilize alternatives. Mm -hmm. um, so you've probably heard about um, yoga, meditation, there's dietary supplements. Well, this is a dietary supplement that you can put into a beverage. So you can drink it as part of your normal diet. So it's, it integrates into normal lifestyle um, more naturally. Yeah, and I think that's a huge issue just with, mo I think most people when they hear, hey, you're prehypertensive, you need to make some lifestyle changes, they all leave the, the physician's office with great intention, but mm -hmm. then the compliance of diet and lifestyle changes are so difficult. So this beverage, does it taste good? Is it something that's convenient? Oh yeah, it's okay. very convenient. Um, we'll have an opportunity to take a look at it in a yeah. little bit, um, but it's low calorie, good tasting, has a fruit flavor to it. Um, the grapeseed extract itself has a little bit of a bitter flavor, sure. and so that's just um, that, that's, that doesn't come through in the beverage formulation. It's a real nice beverage. So it could be as simple as drinking a different juice every morning for breakfast and having sure. a positive impact on your blood pressure. Can you walk us through the research that you've been conducting on this unique form of patented grapeseed extract? Sure. Well, this particular study, we recruited prehypertensive individuals. Mm -hmm. So these are the people that have um, blood pressure in that range that's um, a flag sure. that we start better start paying attention so that yeah. we don't get into that hypertensive range. And this was a six-week study that people consumed the beverage mm -hmm. twice a day, yeah. and they consumed it every day in the morning and then in the evening. Um, but not everybody had the beverage with the grapeseed extract okay. in it. So some individuals had what we call the placebo. Oh, okay? excellent. So that's the inactive juice mm -hmm. compared to the active juice which had the grapeseed extract. Excellent. And so after six weeks, um, we measured their blood pressure um, being on the placebo sure. or the active drink. And of course we did that beforehand, yeah. so it's before and after. Yeah. And what's unique about this study, um, which I think is um, really kind of hits home that the answer of the blood pressure lowering effect of the grapeseed extract, is that after six weeks, the blood pressure um, dropped to a normal level mm -hmm. um, for a majority of the individuals. But then after four weeks, Weeks, people went home and they didn't drink any of the beverages mm -hmm. and came back and we measured their blood pressure again and it went right back up. So it's safe to say that you'd have to take this daily and mm -hmm. have the maximum benefit. But that benefit was realized in just, you know, just over a month. Yeah, that's right. That's wow. right. And we've that's had excellent. other studies um, that have been conducted in metabolic syndrome mm -hmm. um, individuals sure. and four weeks there was a robust effect. Uh, the first question I think everybody has, can I eat more grapes, can I simply drink grape juice, um, are all grape seed extracts the same? What makes Meganatural BP different uh, than a, a, just a, I guess, any run-of-the-mill grape seed extract? Right. Well. Um, the Mega Natural BP um, is, it comes from a patented technology. So there's a manufacturing process that mm -hmm. is different than other grapeseed extracts. Mm -hmm. And when you do look in the literature, you'll see that not all grapeseed extracts perform like okay. the Mega Natural BP. So it's really this patented technology and the form in which it's presented that gives it its extra benefit. And I would suspect as a researcher, having that consistency uh, through this patented process assures mm -hmm. that uh, 
dose to dose, you're getting the exact same material. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that something that is critical to you when looking at a, at a research study? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. We're looking for um, composition mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that it's compositionally sound, that mm -hmm. it's standardized and mm -hmm. yeah, there, yeah, absolutely. Makes sense. Excellent. I know personally uh, compliance to a new uh, diet or nutritional program is difficult. I can only imagine in a clinical trial getting those patients to follow you know, the daily regimen mm -hmm. of the program is really difficult. How important right. or how valuable was it to have a beverage versus a pill or another form uh, of grapeseed extract to consume? Yeah, um, it, I mean, you're spot on. Um, people do have a hard time complying to yeah. new regimens. And in this particular trial, we had about 90% compliance. Excellent. And so um, typically we were looking for 80% or better compliance. Okay. And so people did a, a good job with the beverage. So you recently presented your third human clinical trial on mega natural BP grapeseed extract at the Experimental Biology Conference in Boston. What were some of the comments after your presentation from your colleagues and in industry that attended? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I, yeah, we presented at Experimental Biology and I also recently had the opportunity to um, present some of the findings at the American Aging Association. Okay. And some of the questions at both uh, society meetings were similar to the questions that you've been asking. Yeah. You know, tell me a little bit more about the composition. Mm -hmm. um, is it available today? Yeah. And um, so of course it is available today. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had questions around mechanism of action, uh, what sort of studies have supported the clinical trial mm -hmm. findings. Did you find these are typically clinicians who are saying, hey, is this available now? Or was it fellow researchers wondering, hey, is this material available um, in the market? Both, both meetings tend to attract more research scientists mm -hmm. than clini okay. um, clinicians. Okay. And so um, I'm not sure who the individuals were asking, <laughs> yeah. but um, okay. I suspect they're more scientists. Yeah, well, that's great to mm -hmm. have that level of interest. Mm -hmm. When consumers and clinicians hear about your research findings, um, you know, they're going to get excited. Mm -hmm. is, is this, you know, what is the significance of this to them right now? Can they apply this immediately or uh, is this type of, re does mineral research need to be conducted? Uh, we have three great clinical trials that are showing consistent findings. Okay. It's a safe product. It has grass status. Um, it is available in the dietary supplement stores today. Mm -hmm. The beverage is not available yet. Mm -hmm. um, so we're hoping that that will um, be available soon because it just makes it easier entry into people's homes. Um, I think the the big piece for the excitement is it's another way to, to keep people off medication as mm -hmm. long as possible. I mean, people don't want to be on medications. Physicians aren't looking to put people on um, mm -hmm. quickly. So mm -hmm. what are some of the alternatives? And this just mm -hmm. adds to that toolbox of alternatives. Excellent. We hear about grapeseed extract. Most people, mm -hmm. when they hear about a new uh, dietary ingredient, they think, well, can I just get this from food? How about if I just consume more grapes or eat the seeds with the grapes or drink grape juice? Will I get the same benefit that you found in the study? Right, that, that's a great question, and we do get that um, quite a bit. Um, there's a couple different things that um, play into this. One, the composition of the grapeseed extract is mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. than the composition of the grape. Mm -hmm. um, the grape, you'd have to eat a lot of the grapes grape, to, to get the same uh, of the amount same of the polyphenols that mm -hmm. you're getting. And again, you're not going to get the exact um, same type of polyphenols okay. um, the, in the grape that you get in the grapeseed extract. Mm -hmm. Um, there have been some studies that have shown that grapes can elicit a blood pressure lowering effect, yeah. but you get a, uh, a much more robust uh, effect with the grapeseed extract. I would suspect you're not getting all the fruit sugars and other calories oh, and that at the same yes. time, which may be an issue for somebody that is dealing with metabolic syndrome or weight issues and things of that nature. Yes, so, absolutely. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. What is the difference between prehypertension and hypertension? Uh, well, when we look at uh, hypertension and prehypertension and, and normal blood pressure, mm -hmm. okay, we're looking at ranges. Mm -hmm. And so prehypertension is if we're looking at systolic and diastolic blood pressure, we're looking at a systolic of 120 to 139 millimeters okay. of mercury or a diastolic blood pressure of 80 to 89 okay. millimeters of mercury. So you can qualify on either one. And again, it's this red flag range mm -hmm. that Blood pressure is creeping up. We're not into that risk. Yeah. We've got to do something absolutely right now, whether it's diet, mm -hmm. lifestyle, medication. But it's the flag range that we really want to make some changes. And that's where the dietary intervention really comes in um, strong. How often should we have our blood pressure checked, do you think? 
Well, a lot of people have their blood pressure checked once a year if they go see their physician yeah, okay. once a year. Um, so it's always a good idea, particularly as we age, that mm -hmm. we keep a good eye um, on our blood pressure because it does go, it does increase okay. with age. And so as you get closer and closer to those higher ranges, you'll be wanting to take it more often. And I've heard this analogy that your um, your arteries and blood vessels, as you age, they start hardening. It's kind of like a garden hose that may get hardened, and it doesn't, and it loses that flexibility, mm -hmm. and the pressure goes up. Um, in the understanding the mechanism of action here, does that shed any light on how the grape seed may affect the the vascular system and the the flexibility, or is that? way too advanced. No, no. In fact, um, some of the work done by Dr. Indica Edisaring in cell culture and some ex vivo models have um, shown very nicely that it's this nitric oxide dependent okay. relaxation of the vessel. Okay. There's some cells we call the endothelium, the endothelial cells. Yes. And with um, nitric oxide release that is stimulated by the polyphenols and the grapeseed extract, the vessels um, nicely relax.